Hello everyone, how are you? I'm very good, how are you Juliet? I'm good, thank you. So we're doing a little chat today uh, that's being broadcast in different ways. So those of you listening on Kinda Sound Radio, welcome to Transformative Health. And those of you watching, wherever you're watching, welcome. Welcome. We're gonna chat today, aren't we, about throat health? We are. I am a professional singer and I have approached Juliet to help me figure out how to look after my vocals whilst I'm doing a million concert dates. <laughs> <laughs> and you, Jen is just, Vegan Queen V is who I'm here with. And uh, Jen has done, um, released a new album, which is amazing. And for those listening on the radio, we're gonna play some songs at the end. So listen through to the end, you're gonna hear some. And you are doing loads of dates, aren't you? Yes, and my voice is already starting to struggle a little. Yeah. Uh, and I've really got into more natural ways of um, helping myself, my voice, my body in the last six months. So I wanted to know what is in our garden and available for us to use to, to help our voices. Maybe you're a professional speaker. Uh, I think that's also a job that can tear out the voice quite fast. So Definitely. And it's really interesting because I was a professional actress and my voice used to go a lot doing that. And it was something that I had to work on a lot to keep it healthy. And you do. It's like it's like anything. We have to look after the thing that we're using as our gift, don't we? Yeah, absolutely. So let's get into it straight away. There's lots of different things we can do and we're going to talk about a few of them because there's loads of different ways that you can approach this. Um, one of the key things when we're looking at looking after our body and obviously having the energy to perform because it's not just your throat is it? It's about actually being in good health to have the energy to allow the voice to come through. Mm -hmm. So um, making sure that you're eating a good range of nutrients and lots of fresh food is really important. Because the more processed food, the more refined foods we eat, what this does is this creates more mucus. You know, if you're eating foods that are high in refined sugar or high in dairy, I mean, dairy is a massively mucus building food. Mm. So I know that you're vegan and that's what you're promoting, the kindness to animals and people, which is amazing. So I know you're not having dairy, but this is something that a lot of people do have on a regular basis. Yeah. And you know, I don't know about you, when you ate dairy, did you find it affected your throat? Um, I don't think my health was particularly amazing whilst I was having dairy products anyway. Okay. So I think there was lots of things, yeah, lots of things going on. Okay. Um, so it can um, cause excess mucus. It's like if you know if you have an ice cream and then it's like, <coughs> you've got to clear your throat. Um, so this is something really to avoid if you're if you're a singer or to avoid it when you're about to perform so that your voice can be in, in a good space for that. Um, and then it's like when we eat foods that we're intolerant to, um, this creates more mucus in the body because it's, it's a line of defense. So mm. some of the common um, intolerances are dairy and gluten. These two are the big ones, but there are other things. So checking what you're intolerant to is really good. Have you ever done body dowsing? Oh, is that where you, yes, you stand. Yeah. Uh, so yes, this is something, I have. This is something that's really, really <laughs> cool. We can do it sitting down, but it's best to do it standing, but we'll show it to you sitting down. So this is a great way that you can tune into your body to see what's right for you and what isn't right for you. So what you do, first of all, is you have to ground yourself, connect yourself into the earth and really feel yourself anchoring. So just take a few breaths like this. Now, what you want to do is you want to then ask your body to show you your yes. Now, if you're standing up, feet firmly on the ground, you may find yourself moving forward or backwards or circling or side to side. There's no right or wrong. It's whatever your body does. And sometimes it's a very small movement. So sometimes it's not a big movement. It's a small, almost inner movement. So you have to really be tuned into your body. So I want you all to give it a try now. So just tuning in and breathing and asking your body to show me my yes. That's what you say. Show me my yes. So my yes is moving forwards a little bit and then show me my no. Mine is moving back. But as I said, it's different for everyone. Mine's the opposite. Is it? Quite often it can be, you know, and it can change. So before you do this every time, check first because it can change. Um, so you check what's, and then why this is good is you can go, okay, Daisy, is this good for me right now? And this is a really important thing for right now. It's like, is this good for me right now? And actually, daisies are very good for the throat area as well. 
Ah, so very good for bruising. You can use it on the skin. Loads of loads of different uses for daisies. So tuning in, finding out what foods you're intolerant to, and you can do it just as I did just then with that simple test. So then you can start to avoid building up that excess mucus in your body so that then your throat is going to be in a good space as it is. Okay, so you've, you've got good nutrients coming in. You've cut out the dairy and possibly the gluten. You've looked at what you're intolerant to, so you're reducing that um, immune response in the body and that mucus buildup. Then we're going to look actually, okay, now I, I've just ragged my throat, I've used it a lot, what can I do? That sounds like something that I would say. What, that you've ragged your throat? <laughs> <laughs> what, what am I going to do? <laughs> yeah. So, got three uh, gigs this weekend. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, tonight Jen's got a gig, tomorrow. And then Sunday. And Sunday as well. Yeah. Wow. And the are beagles. Wow, amazing. So that's a lot of stuff that you're doing three days in a row. So one of the key herbs that you can use for your throat is sage. Sage is known as the opera singer's tea because it's, it's what you can do. It kills off bad bacteria and it coats the throat. So it's got that amazing soothing effect and it's killing off anything that's building up in your throat area. So um, if you're using any muscle, it's going to get wear and tear, but sage is there to soothe and calm it. In a minute, we're going to go and look at some of these things, but I'm going to talk a little bit first. You've been having sage tea, haven't you? You know what? I haven't. Oh, you <laughs> haven't? I had it at our last gig uh, and that's it. Okay. So I need to do You it. need to get on the sage. You need, you need to have a sage plant in your van. Yeah, that sounds like something I'd like. And then you can just have it, pick a few leaves, put it in hot water, leave it to steep for five to ten minutes. Yeah. Perfect. The other thing you can do with sage is you can make a gargle from it. So you can make a really um, concentrated sage tea. So loads of leaves, leave it for a while to steep. So you've got really, really rich um, sage properties. And then you can mix it with a little bit of alcohol, just as like a mouthwash. Mm. Um, to preserve it, that's what the alcohol will do, just preserve it. So just a little bit of 40% alcohol, like a tincture almost. Yeah. And then just gargle with it. Because mm. then it's getting back into your throat and it's always working on killing off that bacteria, keeping your throat in a good state. Mint is another one that's really good. Mm. So... Do you ever find that when you sing, you get quite mucusy, or is it more dry? It's more, yeah, it's more my voice just kind of goes, just goes, okay. and it just get a bit sore. Okay. Mucusy sometimes, but that's, I feel like it's not so much of a problem. Okay. So if you do get mucusy things, then mint would be the one because it helps dry out. So it's clearing up the mucus. So sometimes when you're singing, it can be for some people that they get <coughs> and they have to do that a lot because there's a little thing that gets stuck in there. Mm. And that's where the mint tea would come in really useful. Again, get a handful of leaves, stick it in hot water, leave it to steep five to 10 minutes, boom. Really simple. Like the mint tea is so delicious. It is well. so delicious. We don't have to get complicated with things. That's what's really good you can be really simple and effective yeah. with these things yeah. now if you want to repair and I don't have these growing in my garden I'm gonna have to get on growing them and um, when I was thinking about this I thought actually I need to buy these plants so there are two plants that are super useful for the throat now you can buy them in different forms so you can get slippery elm is amazing Now, what slippery elm does is it actually coats the throat so it repairs the larynx. So it's actually working as like a restorative. Now you can buy slippery elm powder, which you could just add into water mm -hmm. and just drink it like that. And it's gonna have that real um, demulsive property, a bit like aloe. Aloe has a similar effect. You know, it's got that, that jelly-like substance. Mm -hmm. Well, that's gonna really soothe and calm the area. So it's that, oh, slippery elm. Yeah. And where could, where could you buy that from? So most health, most health food shops should have slippery elm in kind of like a powder form. Um, and it's also really good for the digestive system. So mm. the throat and the gut are linked. So these all are, uh, this is our mucous membrane here. And we have a mucous membrane in our gut. So when we're working on things for our throat, it's also affecting our gut. Mm. So it's really good to have that kind of demulsive, soothing, calming um, because just like the gut, the throat can get irritated when you're using a lot. 
So that's kind of what's happening. You're creating like an irritation, almost mm. like you're scratching it by mm. using it so much. Mm. Does that make sense? Yeah. yeah. So aloe on that note is also really good oh. because it's got that soothing. Now, if you're using aloe, you wouldn't want to eat the whole leaf because the outer part of the aloe leaf, the green part, is actually toxic. Mm -hmm. So that's poisonous. So we don't want to have that. Mm. But if you have the inside, that beautiful jelly-like substance, yeah. which doesn't taste very nice, but you can mix it with water and some lemon, and that's a really good thing to have as well. Mm. So that, that would be something uh, useful to have. Okay, so we've got sage. Yeah. What do we do with sage? Uh, we can do two things. We've got tea, yeah. and we can either make a, just a normal tea with a few of these, yeah. or we can stuff loads of leaves in, add a bit of alcohol, I can't kind of drink now. I'm just joking. <laughs> joking anymore. Make it more of like a tincture, and and I guess then it's there when you need it rather than having to exactly. make a tea. Exactly, and that's that's the kind of preservative effect. So that if you don't have sage with you all the time, but you need to have a really quick gargle, yeah. then you've got that access to that. That's that's the joy of alcohol. You know, we can use it medicinally um, for things like that. The other thing you yeah. can do with the alcohol is you can actually put the sage leaves into some 40% alcohol, leave that for four to six weeks, and then that will make an actual tincture. Yeah. Um, there's something that I used to make all the time when I was an actress and also when I was, um, I used to have a lot of throat problems. I'd get sore throats a lot. And I'd wake up with a sore throat most mornings. And so I made a really nice throat spray. Mm. And that was a really beautiful thing because you put it in a little bottle and you spray it at the back of your throat. And it was just that it was it was it almost burnt it, but in a good way. And you just then felt that relief of like, oh god, the pain is gone. Really, really nice. So it's quite a good thing to have when you're doing gigs. So you can just give yourself a quick squirt. Yeah. You could put the slippery elm in. Um, Ella Campaign is another one that's very restorative. Um, again, you could make a tincture with that. So you could do sage, mint, Ella Campaign, slippery elm. Um, elderberries are great because they're highly antiviral so you know the throat can be hit if you're using it a lot it can be hit by viruses and bacteria I guess it's the first place that outside stuff comes in isn't it exactly and if you're going <laughs> <laughs> absolutely nailed me there Juliet <laughs> If you're making, if you're, you're using it, you, you're, um, the, there's more bacteria that can get in there and more viruses because you're inhaling a lot and you're, you know, when we talk, we're not using it as, as much, are we? No. Does that make sense? I think so. <laughs> <laughs> so that's um, a really important thing to think about. So elderberries are highly antiviral and also really antibacterial. Um, you can forage them, but not till like August time. So you can get them dried, you can buy them dried and, uh, and put them into your tincture as well. All you'd do with your tincture is you'd put all the ingredients in with 40% alcohol, leave it for four to six weeks and then you strain it all off. Mm. Give it a really good squeeze through like a muslin bag so you get all of the juice from the stuff you put in. Yeah. And then bottle it up into a little spray bottle and that's what you'd spray in your throat. Yeah. Um, so that you, you, the alcohol also kills germs, yeah. kills bacteria. That's why it's in mouthwash, because it kills things mm -hmm. And when it's that 40%. So it's like switching alcohol from being a substance of abuse to a substance that is actually extracting medicinal properties that we're using for that purpose. Yeah, absolutely. Which I think is what's happening with it, isn't it? it is a, it's a medicine, but it's just been abused and misused. Yeah, and we get sick from it, whereas we, we really should be being healed from it. Yeah, we can use it to preserve things so that we can get that uh, amazing medicinal benefit, which is is so good. Um, one of the things about the throat is keeping it lubricated. Yeah, you know, so making sure you're drinking plenty, which, as we discovered this morning, is possibly something I'm not doing enough, and I don't drink that much water anymore. Okay. I drink lots of tea. Okay. It's not great, but Why don't you drink much water? I uh, just need to get it into my habits. Okay. Into my schedule. Yeah. I used to have a pint of water every morning yeah. and it just stopped. So yeah. I need to start again. One of the things about water is if you do it in the morning, if you drink it first thing in the morning, then it starts this, um, this chain reaction in the body where you go, oh, that feels really good to be hydrated. And then you remember to drink. And if you don't drink first thing in the morning, you generally won't drink through the rest of the day. You'll have teas and stuff. And herbal teas are great, but it's not the same as drinking water. No. 
So getting that hydration in is, is, is really good um, to support the body because the more lubricated your throat is, the less dry and scratchy it's going to become, yeah. which makes logical sense. So this is a, a really simple thing, have some water. Another way thing you can do with water to help your throat, put some fresh cucumber in. Because the cucumber actually um, helps the water be more effective. Plus, the cucumbers are really water-based anyway, so they're very hydrating for the body as well. Um, so that's super nourishing for the throat. I guess the inside is similar to the aloe vera. Sorry. Exactly, it's got that soothing, calming property. The skin's more um, irritative, irritative, I don't think that's a word, irritating. <laughs> <laughs> the skin can be irritating to some people, to some people's digestive system, but the, um, the inside bit, that fleshy, soft, beautifulness, it's like if you've got an issue with your body, like what are the symptoms? Are they hot? Are they inflamed? If, you know, are they dry? Are they irritated? Then it's like, well, what could cause the opposite? So what is soft and cooling mm. and um, coating? You know, and that's a really good way to start thinking. It's like, what is the problem and what are the symptoms? Not my throat hurts. It's like, okay, well, what, what, uh, what about your throat hurts? Because mm. then you can narrow it down and go, okay, it's either... If it's dry, you don't want to add things like mint because that's going to be more drying. Mm. You want to add the more kind of emulsive things that are going to coat it and soothe it, like the cucumber, like the aloe, mm -hmm. like the sage. So it's just looking at those properties of what's happening so you can treat it in the right way. Yeah. It's like if it feels red and raw, again, it's that soothing. Um, it, and also things like turmeric and ginger. Yes. Amazing, because if we're overusing a part of our body, like let's say we've hurt our ankle we've been running a lot and we've hurt our ankle are you are running to an ecstatic yoga session <laughs> yeah and trip over <laughs> it's just so excited together so if you have that um what happens the body creates inflammation it's like it sends markers so it's sending these inflammatory markers to the body so it knows it needs to be healed so it's like sending in a, a little alert boom, 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 boom. there's like a little signal I flashing need some help. Exactly. Please. And then the immune Everybody. the immune can go, ah, we need to help. This is where the problem is. And it goes, doo -doo 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 -doo, and it goes and targets that area and sends extra love to help it heal quicker. If you take like pharmaceutical anti-inflammatory pills, then what's going on with that is it's turning those markers off so your body then doesn't know how to repair itself. Mm. Yes. If you have exactly. natural anti-inflammatories like ginger or turmeric, this reduces the markers but doesn't turn them off. So your body's not in such a stress state, but it's allowing it to heal still and for the, the work to happen. So turmeric and ginger, amazing for the throat, uh, really effective at reducing that inflammation if it's an inflammatory response that you're having. So again, this comes back to knowing what's going on in your body. Mm. For me, if I um, am about to sing, if I have um, turmeric or ginger, it doesn't work for me, or lemon. It, then they're really not good. So it's about listening to your body because it will make me um, <clears throat> do this more. <clears throat> mm. and, and, and I have to clear my throat more. Whereas if I have sage, then that's really beneficial. If I have some aloe, that's really helpful. So it's about knowing your body as well. I guess the dowsing might. Exactly, the dowsing yeah. would be really good. But again, it's drilling down about what the reason is for your throat and what you're trying to do. What are you trying to achieve with it? And why is your throat irritated? Why is it causing a problem? Mm. So that's kind of the... the Th that, that question is a bit tricky, isn't it? Because it's not always... It might not have anything to do with how I'm actually using my throat. It might be that I'm not having enough water. Exactly. Or, you know, there could be a few things. Exactly. With anything in the body, it's like there's never... Unfortunately, just a really straightforward answer. I mean, the first straightforward answer I'd say would be to have sage tea. That would yeah. be my first, like, that works for pretty much everyone for the throat, regardless of what's going on. That's going to be quite a good um, indicator to help it. Um, but it is with anything. It's about tuning in and listening to the body. Why is your body doing this? And the more you listen to your body, the more those answers are naturally revealed. It's... it's um, something we've been programmed out of like yeah. you know so what you can do is you can sit and you can put your hands lightly on your throat and you can say just bring your awareness to your throat just taking your attention down to that area and if it's too much putting your hands on your throat you can just hold them away a little bit some people don't like that feeling um, on their throat of hands it feels a bit restrictive 
um, and if we've got any trauma around past life stuff, you know, we might not want hands there. So just lightly having your hands there or in that vicinity. And then just tuning in and asking your throat, what do I need? What's going on? What do you need, beautiful throat, to help you feel good? And you may get a word or feeling. You may get an image. Does anything come to you as you tune into your throat? I think I'm just thinking about sage. Okay. <laughs> so sage is, is on my mind. Yeah. And sometimes it's it's not our mind actually doing it, it's our body because we've just given it some tools. We've said, okay, these are things that might help. And the body goes, yes, yeah, sage, that's the one. Yeah. It might be that your throat just needs some love. Yeah. You know, just actual hands here and healing. Yeah. A really great technique is rubbing your hands together like this. Just putting them together, rubbing them, rubbing them, rubbing them. For those of you listening, I'm just creating some friction, creating some energy, and then just gently placing them on your throat and sending that beautiful healing energy. It could be that you call down the energy of the sun, that beautiful golden light, to come through your crown at the top of your head, move down through your face, through your sinuses, blocking any tension, releasing any tension, any blocks in your nasal area, and then moving to your throat and filling your throat with a beautiful golden light, healing and soothing, feeling that beautiful calming energy just descending to that area. Oh, and you may want to sigh and release anything that's in there. Oh. And then just shaking your hands off and then releasing. Whenever you do any healing work, the energy is flowing through. If you shake them, then that stops that energy. So you're not just constantly draining energy mm. out, which is a really important thing. Um, one other thing with the throat is this is our chakra. It's a chakra center here, an energy center and the word for it is I trust. So sometimes when we're not trusting life or we're not trusting ourselves or when we're not trusting our voice to be the note it needs to be or to do what it wants to do or we've got that pressure around that, it can get blocked phys energetically, not physically. So whenever we're looking at our body and anything going on with our body, I feel we have to remember we're more than our physical being. We are energetic beings made up of a mind, body, spirit. So we have to look at all those levels. You know, is this a physical thing? Is this a mental thing? Is this an emotional thing or is it a spiritual thing? Like what layer of our being do we need to look at for actually tackling the problem? Yeah. And it may be that we're blocking our voice. It may be that we're not allowing that, we're not trusting it to be its fullest. It may be that we're not speaking our truth or we're holding back a bit from speaking our truth and then that can put that tightening on our throat. So that's a really important thing as well to like, you know, allow your voice to flow freely and just to trust the process. And I have to remind myself of that a lot because I have a lot of issues around singing and my voice, around trusting. Because um, I always think, am I, am I singing flat? Is it going to be okay? Like, am I going to sing it? You know, all these things that come up. So a big part of my throat blocks are energetic, not trusting on that level. Yeah. Some things to think about, definitely. Yeah. Just bear in mind. One other thing. If you suffer from a lot of sore throats, as opposed to you're using your voice a lot, but you actually suffer from a lot of sore throats, garlic is amazing um, to take on a regular basis because this really supports your immune system. So I guess another kind of small aspect is if you're touring a lot, you're more susceptible to get sick mm. because you're ragging your body, you know? You're having late nights. Um, maybe you're not eating as well as you would eat because you're, you're traveling around. Um, you're not sleeping so much which supports the immune system so your body is more susceptible to coughs and colds and sore throats so having more vitamin C and having more garlic is, is really key to help just keep you in general good health yeah yeah I'm a little bad at taking things like that so I need to get back to it just, yeah. it's a schedule uh, you know routine thing yeah so just make it part of your routine Exactly. And, you know, if you have like some vitamin C pills that you can suck on, make sure they've got some natural bioflavonoids or 
or even some camu camu powder or you know rose hip syrup uh, rose hip syrup is a beautiful thing for your throat because any syrups have that uh, lovely coating so you know roses are very high in vitamin c they're the highest sort of vitamin c in the uk uh -huh. so that's a really nice thing to kind of add in so you've got some kind of syrup syrups have to be refrigerated um, so they don't have a huge shelf life if you're not using lots of sugar um, but they have that really lovely quality to them mm. and it's delicious yeah, exactly. It is delicious. You can kind of knock it back and, and have that. What we're going to do, because we're almost out of time, um, so we're going to have a quick look at these plants for those of you who are watching. Um, for those of you who are listening on Kind of Sound Radio, we're now going to go over to some of Jen's amazing music. So this is Vegan Queen V and The Power. Enjoy. Ooh. Okay, for those of you watching, uh, hang on, I've got to save this. <laughs> we don't want that to uh, disappear. <laughs> okay, we're going to go on a little quick tour. Welcome to Juliet's Garden. Okay, so over here we have, can you see? This one in here. Dun, dun, dun. This is sage. This is a beautiful sage plant. Oh, so you just get a few of those leaves. Um, another one that we've got here is lemon balm. You see the lemon balm? Lemon balm is very good for the throat. It has more of an astringent property, so it's more drying. So again, this lemon balm and mint, or if you're quite mucusy and you want to clear out that mucus before you sing, you'd have lemon balm and mint tea. That would be perfect for that, okay? So different properties. Um, this is mugwort here. Mugwort is soothing and calming and relaxing. So if you want to have a bit of soothing and calming in there um, before you go on stage, because you might be feeling a little bit, <gasps> then that would be a good one. Another great one is chamomile. This is chamomile over here, a little bit down, that's it. <laughs> so we've got some beautiful chamomile flowers coming up there. Aww. That's it. They so look a bit like daisies. They do ones. look a bit like daisies, but this is really soothing, calming. It smells a bit like honey. Mm. So it's got that kind of, you know, if you weren't a vegan and you were having a teaspoon of honey, that's got that real coating effect on the throat. Honey is hugely antimicrobial, so if you're not vegan, it's something that is uh, very effective. But you can also make a vegan version of honey. Oh yeah, with dandelions. Exactly, Woo! with dandelions. I wouldn't, it's bloody delicious. I wouldn't use refined sugar. Use coconut sugar, or you could use like an unrefined uh, sugar. Don't use the refined stuff because that's just not going to be effective or helpful for the body. So using like a coconut sugar, or you can get maple syrup granules. Oh. Now maple syrup is an amazing thing to have. Actually, it's it's really highly nutritious. So you could use that with uh, the chamomile, the dandelions, to make a nice um, honey that way. And that again is going to coat your throat because it's got that soothing property to it. Uh, let's see, is there anything else? I think those are probably, oh, there's one thing. If you want to like, this would not be right before you sing, but if you want to kick some butt with your throat. Oh yeah. Okay, this plant here. Oh, hi, Zala. <laughs> Zala wants to learn about throat health as well. Okay, that's it. So this here, I'm going to give you a little bit to smell. Not on, here, <laughs> can you smell that? Yes. So, oh. This yeah. is horseradish. Oh. So we don't use the leaves, we use the root. But if you've got a bit of a spike in your throat, if you've got a bit of a like, <clears throat> oh, I'm feeling like I might be coming down with something, I've got a gig, oh my God, what am I gonna do? Which can happen, can't it? Um, horseradish, eat a little bit of that and that will just kick anything out. Any mm. bug that's starting, wow. that will just knock it out. Um, because obviously you don't wanna lose your voice because of illness just before a gig so is that the same as horseradish sauce or is that the leaf so no no it's all the root it's always the root so um oh that's that's going to be the effective thing i guess is, i don't is... really know what horseradish sauce actually is so horseradish sauce what they do is uh should we come back over here yeah horseradish sauce um they chop up the root of the horseradish and uh that's what they use to make um, horseradish sauce so it's right. normally horseradish sauce is the root chopped up and then it's blended and it's done with like cream yeah and um, but you can obviously get a vegan version but you can make it yourself the other thing you can do with horseradish is you can just chop it up and stick it in some olive oil and then it infuses oh. all the properties of that horseradish into the olive oil and it's a great way to preserve it or you can just grate the root fresh 
um, and have it that way. Obviously, the root is only going to last a certain amount of time, so that's why we preserve it in stuff like a sauce or an oil. Yeah. But that will, like, anything with that fiery, like, um, strong, pungent flavour is going to kick anything out. Any bugs. Yeah. Yeah. Brilliant. So I hope that's been informative. Are we going to finish with a little song? Yeah. The radio missed this out, but you guys get to have this uh, on the video. Mother, I feel you under my feet. Mother, I feel your heart beat. Mother, I feel you under my feet. Mother, I feel your heart beat. a lot and I'm going to be doing quite a lot of different things going forward. Amazing. Lots of love.